I wish they'd make their damn minds up. When you point out the obvious flaws with public charging, like the inevitable queues that would form because each car takes so long, and the ridiculous amount of electricity required to provide rapid charging for multiple cars simultaneously, the evangelists will rapidly pivot to saying, "Ah, oh, well, most people will charge at home anyway. Which is odd given how many people live in apartment blocks or terrace houses without any off-street parking. But it turns out if everyone does charge at home, it's going to cause even more problems. Not just because of the risk of the car catching fire and burning your house down, but because, guess what, the grid won't be able to cope. Of course it won't, we've been saying that on this channel for years. But it's taken a scientific paper from Stanford University to point out that the time at which most people will be charging, i.e. overnight, is when there's already high demand for electricity and there's no sun. So unless you're our razor sharp Prime Minister who thinks you can charge your car from solar overnight, that's a problem. Welcome back to MGuy, British engineer and lawyer, now Sydney-based YouTuber. Please make sure you've clicked that subscribe button down below and enabled all notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you'd like to support this channel, why not buy me a coffee? Click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen. The poles and wires that supply the electricity to suburban homes were not designed to cope with the huge demand of EV charging, which far outstrips everything else. You might boil a kettle at 2 kilowatts for 10 minutes, or you might have a 1 kilowatt fan on for a couple of hours. But here we have 8 to 12 hours of constant power draw at up to 22 kilowatts. That's 11 kettles going full blast all night. That's like adding several extra houses to every single home that has an EV charging on the driveway. Politicians and environmentalists don't understand any of this, of course, which is why they believe that this will all just happen by magic. This article, when we get past all the usual net zero zealotry, of course, actually points out the obvious problems. Scientists caution against charging electric vehicles at home overnight. Transportation continues to be a top contributor to greenhouse gas emissions worldwide. Cutting these emissions hinges on electrifying how we move. The global electric vehicle fleet now at 7 million is expected to soar to over 400 million by 2040. This dramatic rise in EVs marks real progress for the climate, hmm. but it also brings mounting pressure to modernise the power grid. Utilities must ramp up capacity, invest in new infrastructure and rethink how electricity is distributed to keep pace with growing charging needs. By 2040, experts predict 300 million charging connectors will be needed worldwide. Access to charging, whether at home, on the job or out in public, strongly influences drivers' choices. If charging is difficult, fewer people will make the switch. Much of the focus so far has been on placing public chargers where they're most needed, but long-term success depends on more than location. Planners need accurate insights into how people charge, where they plug in, when they do it, and how often. Recent research shows charging habits are more complex than expected. Most drivers prefer plugging in at home or nearby, especially overnight. While this offers convenience, it creates problems for the power grid, which is already under stress during peak evening hours. A new study in applied energy from Stanford University sounds the alarm. We must move away from our current model of overnight home charging, the researchers argue. Without change, the rapid growth in EVs could do more harm than good. The study looked at trends in the western US through 2035. If overnight home charging remains the norm, regional electricity demand could jump by up to 25% during peak hours. That kind of spike would strain the system. Meeting this demand would likely mean adding power from natural gas, an outcome that undermines efforts to cut carbon. Without strategic shifts in when and where people charge, the push to electrify vehicles could backfire. In contrast, shifting charging to daytime hours, particularly during periods of abundant solar energy, could alleviate grid stress and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Ram Rajagopal, co-senior author of the study, emphasises the need for policymakers to encourage daytime charging through utility rate adjustments and investments in workplace and public charging infrastructure. 
policymakers should consider utility rates that encourage day charging and incentivise investment in charging infrastructure to shift drivers from home to work for charging, Raja Gopal stated. California, a leader in renewable energy adoption, generates surplus solar energy during late mornings and early afternoons. Utilising this surplus to charge EVs could minimise waste while reducing reliance on natural gas-fired power plants. However, achieving this shift requires rethinking electricity pricing and incentivising employers to install workplace chargers. Lead author Siobhan Powell noted the interconnected nature of the electric grid across western states, emphasising that changes in EV charging habits in one state affect the entire region. EV charging plus all other electricity uses have consequences for the whole western region, given the interconnected nature of our electric grid, she said. Geez, it just goes to show how none of this has been thought through, especially when it comes to scalability. There clearly isn't enough infrastructure to provide for at-home EV charging, especially at scale. A few evangelists with EVs on the driveway is fine, but when you're forcing everyone to buy an EV and charge at home, it's never going to work. If EV adoption reaches 50% of vehicles in the western US, current charging habits would necessitate 5.4 gigawatts of energy storage, the equivalent capacity of five large nuclear reactors. A shift to workplace charging could reduce this need to 4.2 gigawatts. However, building the necessary infrastructure requires significant time and investment. California's ambitious EV targets include banning gasoline-powered car sales by 2035 and achieving 5 million EVs on the road by 2030. Meeting these goals demands coordinated policy measures and investments to expand charging infrastructure while promoting behavioural changes amongst drivers. So it's not only a failure to provide for infrastructure, but note that it's also about forcing behavioural changes on drivers, i.e. limiting their freedoms by forcing them to charge at specific times and places. Whoever said this was all about control was right on the money. We'll have to charge during the day instead, when the solar panels might be working or when the wind might be blowing. So the main convenience of EVs trumpeted by the electrification zealots, namely charging at home overnight, will eventually be limited because of the demand it will place on the grid. And once again, those poor souls who have no choice but to buy an EV will discover another little piece of their freedom has been chipped away. Repeat after me, never buy an EV, buy a good used petrol or diesel car, maintain it well, keep it as long as possible. You'll be doing more to save the planet than buying an EV ever will.